life, love, and pop pop culture. Hi, I'm Danielle Delgado. And I'm Brent Pope, and you're watching Life, Love, and Pop Culture. Uh, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you just recently made an appearance on Roseanne. Tell me I, about this experience. I did. Uh, it was. It's pretty surreal, as you might imagine, because mm -hmm. you walk on set, and then you see John Goodman, Emmy winner, uh, Sarah Gilbert, Emmy winner, Roseanne, Emmy winner, yeah. uh, I'm missing one, Laurie Metcalf, Emmy winner, uh, Academy Award nominee. Yes. And then you're sitting there going, okay, I guess I better, I better bring it, because uh, <laughs> I know they're going to. Yes. And uh, just one of the most like professional sets, which makes sense, I guess, because mm -hmm. they all worked together for about 10 years, yeah. and they got almost the entire cast back and they got a lot of the crew back. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, you know, you have Wanda Sykes writing on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, you have Whitney Cummings as one of the uh, showrunners. Uh, yeah, that was, I think that was the highlight of my entire week is when Whitney Cummings came up and actually knew my name. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. I yeah. made it. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, just, I, I, I was there three days on set. Uh, we had the live, the studio audience, which is also just, crazy i mean there were there were celebrities in the audience just to watch really? the taping sure usually you know i don't think that you get uh celebrities in the audience the to watch TV, the live yeah. taping yeah. yeah but this was such a huge thing it was hard to even get my wife and my friend uh philip in to see <laughs> like i had to i was on like on the overflow list to even have people in the audience at all wow. so uh we were anticipating it was gonna be big i didn't think it was gonna be as big as it is I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, like after the first taping, I think they were like automatically renewed for what? Automatically season. renewed, and it was something like yeah. the largest uh, comedy audience in like four yeah. years so since uh, some crazy Big Bang Theory, I think, yeah. uh, episode. And I also, that's the other thing, I was on the only episode that had Johnny Galecki, yeah. which I don't know if you are a big fan of Big Bang Big Theory, Bang but Theory, yes. come on. I don't know, do you have any questions about? Uh... <laughs> Just spill everything that happened on set. That's what we wanted to know. Um, I will say this, Roseanne is like a, a comedy genius. Mm -hmm. and, and when there were things that weren't up to her uh, expectations, mm -hmm. she's, I mean, she's never gonna be shy about saying, I don't think this works, yeah. let's try something else, which I think is one of the reasons the show originally was so great mm -hmm. and is doing so well now because they have such high standards. So aside from Roseanne, you're mm -hmm. gonna be co-starring on the Hulu series Casual, so explain your role in the show. Oh, uh, <laughs> Casual, I don't know if you watched the show Casual. Yeah, I, took, um, I saw a little bit of it, yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, Michaela Watkins plays, um, uh, a woman who has, she's a single mom who has a daughter. Oh, I'm just a single mom, Jess. Uh, she has a daughter. She's moved back in uh, with her brother. Yeah. And so uh, there's all these strange situations that happen because of that. But my character, basically, um, I'm playing a uh, plumber, and someone has, like, <laughs> done some really bad things with the plumbing, and so I'm really, uh, <laughs> I'm really doubting what, what's going on in this. I mean, I had, that's the scene, basically. It was... There's uh, there's something gone wrong with the plumbing. I think that's the most I can say uh -huh. without giving away. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Throughout this whole journey to get to this point in your career, what would you say is the biggest life lesson you've learned all the way? The biggest. Uh, <laughs> okay. The biggest life lesson I learned is uh, to never overreact. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example. I shot the the show Better Things. I've never seen Better Things. And I'm such a huge fan of Better Things. Pamela Adlon is like one of my heroes. Uh, I don't know, do you know Pamela Adlon? If you ever watched King of the Hill, do you remember that show? Yes, yeah. She played Bobby Hill. Like, oh, okay. so she's got that gravelly voice. She's uh, she's worked so long and that finally has her own show and she got a Peabody Award last year. Anyway, I went into audition for that show and I put so much pressure on myself and I was so worried. Uh, and then I, I went in and I felt like I did not do well in the audition, mm -hmm. and I, I was I, I called my friend. I was like, oh, "That's it! I'm done! I'm quitting acting!" Yeah. And then a couple months went by, and uh, I got a call, and they said, "Yeah, Pamela Adlon really loved your old audition. Wow. They want to book you on the show." So don't overreact because you don't know if something's going to happen later. And also, maybe I wasn't terrible. Maybe that was just in my mind. So and beauty's in the eye of the beholder, yeah. right? So somebody thinks it's great. You only need one person to do that. 
it's funny. I feel like we're our worst critics because I feel the same way. I'm like, oh, that went terrible. Mm -hmm. And then everybody's like, it was good. What are you talking about? I know. We have no <gasps> idea. Scary, like, yeah. we're, we, we hear, even with like how our voices sound, we only hear what it sounds like inside of our head. My voice. <laughs> right. Me too. But then other people say, probably say, you have a great voice. Uh, they, they don't say that to me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think Edwin's ever said that to me. I don't no, okay. Well, that's, that's that's both of us then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bad voice. Bad voices. You've done so much already, but what do you want your fans to remember you for the most? Uh, well, I, I think what they do remember me for the most, and the, the thing I'd love to go back and do again, was I, on the show Speechless, uh -huh. I, I played a guy at the airport that is a baggage handler, uh, and me and the dad on Speechless, John Ross Bowie, uh, we had this heated uh, luggage golf uh, contest, which I guess is something that they maybe they do at the airport yeah. when they're uh, when they're not doing the right stuff with your luggage, they're like playing golf with your luggage. <laughs> I would love to play some more luggage golf. <laughs> I just don't have the space. I don't have all the luggage. I'd love to do that again. And uh, yeah, that's probably. <laughs> Is that shooting too low? <laughs> to play luggage golf. <laughs> hey, if that's what you want people to remember you for, <laughs> then that's what you want people to Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I chose poorly. <laughs> hey. uh, it's, it's, your, my life, your, yeah. it's my life, guys. <laughs> thank you so much, Brett, for being yes, here. Yes, thanks for having me. This is awesome. Yes, thank you guys for watching, and don't forget to tune in next time, guys, as we discuss more life, love, and pop culture. Life, love, and pop, pop culture. If you enjoyed my interview, subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to look out for new videos every Wednesday.